I love women's revenge films or women in prison films. I love them. All right. Oh, yeah. You know how I love being on camera. Pitch Planet. You've even mentioned that. Don't get too attached to characters yeah. because I'm kind of an evil person. I'm not that bad. I'm not Karen Gillan. I'm going to do this now with a straight face. Kelly Sue DeConnick introduced her to a totally different version of Carol Danvers in Captain Marvel and made the Carol core happen. She's also the genius writer behind Bitch Planet. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Tell me your thoughts on, on, on seeing that first concept art with Brie Larson in, in the, the costume that came from your run in the book. Yeah, so um, that was really incredible. And I, Brie is a tremendous actress and, um, and I trust her. You know, so I'm psyched. Um, I say that as though like we're tight and we go back. I've never met the woman, but um, but I like her on Twitter. Um, Jamie McKelvey designed that costume. I get a lot of credit for it. And uh, the story of my role in the costume is that they were gonna have it designed in house. They showed me some designs. I did not like them. I asked if it would be possible to have Jamie do the design, this was kind of a risky book because it didn't have a lot of big names on it and I was not a big name at the time. Um, and Carol was sort of a B-list character at the time. And so the uh, book didn't have a big budget. we like, we don't have extra money to get an outside design done. And I was like, whoa, what if I paid Jamie to do it? And Steve Wacker said, if you could find a, a design that Jamie happened to have done, I might be able to convince uh, the money people to free up the budget for it. So I talked to Jamie and was like, you know, let's make a bet. I think if you do this design, they'll buy it. And if they don't, I will. Um, Put your money where your mouth I is. I did, I did. And uh, and Jamie is very, very good at what he does. And so he put that costume together. Um, he did an incredible job. And of course, miraculously, the billion dollar company found the money <laughs> to pay for the costume design. That's a great story, I love it. So let's talk about Bitch Planet. I'd love to know how you came up with this idea to tackle feminism in the form of a space prison plan. Wait, you didn't think it was obvious? It started with um, Valentine Delandra, who I met at Fan Expo in Toronto a number of years ago, and Captain Marvel had maybe just started coming out. I, I was at that point in my career where I had a, a little bit of a name, a little bit of juice, but um, but like I didn't have any trouble walking around a convention or anything, you know? And, um, and I saw Val and Val this is such a like, ridiculous thing to celebrate, but, uh, but Val, like, uh, you know, stood up and extended his hand and greeted me as though I might be a colleague or a person and um, uh, showed me his portfolio and it was incredible work. He's so gifted um, and he was charming and funny and I just liked him immediately. And so um, I told him about Captain Marvel and uh, some other projects that I had and, and was, you know, it was like, you know, maybe we could work together at some point. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. We did a few small right. pieces here and there. Um, and at some point Val was like, you know, we don't have to wait for them to give us a book. We could do a creator owned book. And I was like, you know, I didn't know that was what you were into. And uh, so <laughs> I sent him a list of uh, what I call sweater threads. Like I, I keep a list of things that I think there's a story here. Um, so I sent him my list of sweater threads and was like, you know, are any, any of these appealing to you? And he wrote back and was like, yeah, you know, I like this one and I like this one, but this one I'm really responding to is, um, is this bitch planet. At one point I had pitched it to sci-fi and they passed, but I, there were a couple of those ideas that I was like, I like that, I'm keeping that. So I started thinking about why I had ever put it down on my list, why, what had been fun about it that I wanted to do. And I love, uh, wholly and deeply adore exploitation films of the 1970s, um, uh, particularly uh, women's revenge films or women in prison films, I love them. Um, but uh, as an adult woman and a feminist, um, they are, how you say, problematic. And so I was trying to figure out 
how could I preserve the things I loved about those films, but present them from a feminist perspective? You know, could I do exploitation that was not exploitative? I also have a, a tremendous love of the uh, 1987, I think it is, film um, uh, Robocop. Um, I know there are subsequent ones, but... Let's just talk about the one that matters. We don't acknowledge those. I, I think that Robocop... The fascist society... Yeah, yeah I think it yeah, functions as well yeah. as it does because it is brilliant, biting satire that is... Uh, on one hand, it's this kind of mean, nasty, funny, and on the other hand, there's this um, incredibly sentimental, almost saccharine, core relationship, right? And um, either one of those alone would be unpalatable, but together it's like, um, it's like salt and chocolate. Is Bridge Planet a cathartic uh, exercise for you in a way? Oh, totally. Cam is ostensibly the protagonist, but at this point, the table's not completely set. Um, so we're still kind of establishing the world and it's a large cast. Um, and what has been really fascinating to me, um, Penny Roll is everyone's favorite. Like, hands down, everyone's favorite. She's awesome. Yeah. I didn't expect her to resonate the way she has with people who don't look like her at all. Um, and that, Interesting. yeah, that has been really magical. The superhero comics at their core, they're, they're built on the foundation of, you know, the, the strong, you know, the big strong heroes go in and help the little guys, the people yes. who are oppressed. Essentially what feminism is about. Yes, exactly. Right? This is this is always when people are like, would you please get your politics out of my comic books? I'm like, what comic books are you reading? Where is the apolitical comic book that you're reading? I'm like, I want to go back to the comic books we were reading in my youth. The 70s, when they were incredibly political and not even... Or you go back to this, the Ditko Spider-Man yes. issues, which was, he was, Peter Parker was getting bullied and, yes. and traumatized at school. Yes, I'm sorry to break this to you, but Captain America is a social justice warrior. I know you mean that as, a, as, a, as an insult, but there is just no, like, that is the definition of what he is, you know? And if all you want to read are, I don't know, books about, I, I literally can't even think of what would be. You're right, if, if Cap had a Twitter account, he'd yeah. be a, an SJW for sure. Yes, I mean. And that's he, not a bad thing. Chris Evans does. I mean, he's and, a, it's Chris um, Evans. And Captain as far like, yes. is an SJW for sure. Yes, and. Uh, and that's not an insult. Not at sure. all, not at all. It's. May I curse? Yeah, she can curse. Yes, he gives a f you know? Like, he cares about people who don't happen to be wealthy actors. Um, uh, he cares about people who weren't born with the privilege that he was born with. Um, and that is what Captain America does. Captain America stands up for what I think we wish this country would was. You know, I think the, the, the ideals that we have always stood for but not always acted on. Right. Um, and uh, and if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. Problem solved. You know, you don't like my Twitter feed? Unfollow me. Magic. You know, I don't come into your house and yell at you. You gotta seek me out. So don't. If it's problematic, if it's upsetting to your delicate constitution,